Greetings, everybody. I'm Jeremiah. That's him. She's Vanya. That's me. Welcome to another episode of the Beard and Curls podcast, where culture and creativity meets consciousness. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel or follow us on your favorite platform for the latest, most exciting conversations anywhere. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Cue that intro. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Margo Bingham. Karen Parsons. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You're now tuned in. You are now tuned in. You are now tuned in to Beard and Curls. 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 Keep it locked. Today's guest is a certified relationship coach. She is passionate about traveling, music, people, and so much more. However, you guys may know her best as the co-host of the Beard and Curls podcast. We're talking about none other than Vanya Dierjuis. Vanya, welcome to your own show. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So whenever people talk to you, one of the first things that they pick up on is your accent. Yes. So where is that accent from? Where are you from? Tell us about yourself. So I was born and raised in Curacao, which is a, an island in the Caribbean. So that's where I'm from. Most of my family is there. And um, my native language is Papiamento. So okay, that's what? Papiamento. What is that? Stop acting as if you don't know. You should start learning more. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, Papiamento has been um, influenced by different other languages throughout the years. Like if you look way back, so we have a little bit of Dutch influence, um, Spanish, Portuguese influence, African influence. Um, yeah, so that's what I speak with my family. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So. As an island, uh, do you guys belong to like a country or what's the origin of Curacao? Yes. So we are part of the Dutch kingdom. So we're not fully independent. Um, so because of that, I'm a Dutch citizen. And that's why when I finished high school, I moved to the Netherlands to study. And I did my degrees in the Netherlands. Yeah. Okay. So what are some things that are like common to Curacao? Like what are some of the things that you guys are known for? So one of the things that I like um, growing up is the fact that we're, we are exposed to a lot of nationalities, a lot of languages. For example, I grew up watching TV in Spanish. So, I was, <laughs> so I was able <laughs> you act as if you know exactly what it is. <laughs> Novelas? Uh -huh. I don't watch, but I know what it is. <laughs> so... Um, so, yeah, so I grew up watching Spanish, so that helped a lot, you know, for me to learn the language. And then um, my education was in Dutch. Um, and then I learned English in school. And then at some point, also TV and traveling. And yeah, so I think the fact that we we are exposed to a lot and um, the people from Curacao, like we, we like to absorb. So it's normal. I think like it's in the culture. Mm -hmm. It's almost like people tend to adjust to the foreigners, like even when they come and live there, learn their language versus the other way around um, in a way. Um, yeah. So that's like one of the things that so I enjoy. How, how many languages do the people uh, speak for the most part, like the natives? Like a, a lot of people speak four languages. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so that would be English. That would be Dutch. That would be Papiamento mm -hmm. and then Spanish. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Of course, it depends on how intentional you are about learning the languages. So some people know the languages better than others, but like most people can, um, you know, survive like in those languages. Okay. Yeah. And in your case, you actually speak <clears throat> six languages. Five and a half. Five and a half, <laughs> you know, six-ish. So the extra two languages for you would be what? Um, so Portuguese and French. My French is not that good. I can read and write and speak a little bit. Um, yeah, but yes, Portuguese, because um, when I was doing my master's program, I did an international exchange program in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, and I had such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and how long were you out there for? I was there for eight months. Wow. Well, initially for five I went there for five months um, with a student visa because it was like an international exchange program. And um, yeah, so I went for five and then I ended up extending it uh, and stayed. I stayed like three extra months as a tourist. Wow. So, um, and so over that time span, 
you were able to learn a language to where you still speak Portuguese fluently to this day? Yes, obviously it's a while ago. So, you know, when you don't practice it, you, you kind of like lose the fluency a little bit. But if I go there, I'm sure like in a week, you know, it's, it's going to be like fresh in my head. But I do, I mean, I still have friends there. So we do talk. Um, so every and, now and then you get to yeah, practice in yeah, Portuguese? Yeah. I do, I do practice. Okay. And um, yeah, but I had a really good time. Like I really love to travel. I think one of the things that I um, value a lot about other cultures is that there's so much you can learn. Like you learn to... Um, develop respect for other people, like, yeah, learn about how they do things and 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 maybe there are things that you can start incorporating also. So, yeah, so it's a box of mystery and excitement for me. So, like, when you say, because I can kind of see how excited you got when you talked about Brazil and just that love that you have for traveling. So, yes. what does traveling do for you when you're able to travel and explore different cultures and meet different people? What does that do for you? Like for me, it's like it's like practical education. It's like you learn those things that you don't learn in school. Um, like when I travel, I I enjoy trying different food. Um, I because I love cooking too. So it's like getting so inspired to try different things that maybe I haven't tried before. Um, I enjoy talking to people, like learning about new new. I mean, traditions, things that, yeah, people do. Um, I, I enjoy, like, the whole travel experience. Like, you you get to know yourself better mm. because you have to learn how to maybe, you know, resolve things when things don't go. Like, when your flight gets canceled, for example. Mm. Like, one day I was going to, we were going to um, my friends and, and my sister's. We were going to Italy. So back then I was living in the Netherlands and we had to drive to to an airport in Germany. Okay. So we put it in the GPS and we actually drove to the wrong airport. Oh wow. So when that, we, that wasn't scary at all. No, not to me it wasn't scary because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't scary. It was unfortunate because okay. of course you want to catch your flight. But okay. um so in that moment, so we got to the wrong airport. And then we realized that, and then we started going to the to the right airport, and then we saw we saw the plane like leaving mm. before we 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 got there. And then in that moment, you're like, okay, so what do we do? You know, like we're a group of of girls like heading to Italy, and so in that moment, you need to think like, okay, so we need to reschedule. Or, or whatever, like we need to find a hotel. Mm -hmm. And some people get overwhelmed because they don't know what to do in that moment, you know? Um, and so, yeah. So I feel like you you just learn besides just the fun part, you learn a lot of practical things also. And I think you grow as a person. That's yeah. awesome. So then I like that you said that though, like you learn like some life lessons, you learn about yourself, you grow. Yes. And it's like the practical part. So. It doesn't get, I don't get the sense that you travel for luxury or leisure. So it's like if you're able to go there and you connect with the locals and you learn some of their customs and stuff like that, it seems like that's more so the experience that you want to get from it. Yes. Yes. So like staying at a five star resort, all inclusive doesn't sound like it's the plan. No, I mean I could I could stay at a five star, but I need to have I want to have that local experience also. So I'm totally I'm totally fine like traveling not five star like actually that's the reason why i was able to travel to so many places because of that mindset if if the only thing i want is luxury then i could i wouldn't be able to afford it because as a student i traveled a lot so my priority was gaining experience because uh, at that time i i mean i'm glad i was thinking like that even when i was younger because i was like I'm, I want to like get experience that money can buy. Wow. Like at some point you may have more money, but you don't have the experience. Mm -hmm. And like, I wanted to maximize each phase of my life. So as a student, I'm like, okay, I have a lot of freedom. I can travel anytime I can. So instead of buying maybe a, an expensive TV, like maybe other students would do, I would just get a, I remember I had like an older TV, like a, um, 
very cheap TV. Mm -hmm. But I was okay with that because so, I wanted to invest my money in traveling. That was like my top priority as a student. I mean, I still love to travel, of course. That's But it's a little different. Like when you're a student and you have like so much flexibility and freedom, at least for me, because I was living in the Netherlands and Europe, it's easier to go to different places. So yeah, I just, um, we, like my sisters um, and my brother also like, Whenever we could travel together and friends, like we would, uh, we would make it so, happen. So personally for you, and I appreciate everything you're sharing. When did you start having this love for traveling? When did that develop? Oh, I remember when I was 15, I went to Venezuela to visit, um, to visit a really good friend that moved there. Um, so they moved from Curacao to Venezuela because her dad, um, got a job there so my sister and I we went to visit them and we had such a so my friend like like two friends um so we had such such a good time like and it's it, it was all doing the simple things together like we would just like go by like eat cachapa which is like a like a sweet corn um pancake if I can explain it a little bit simple and we would just have, have such a good time or we would just like go for walks, go, like we would go swim and go to, go to the town and just like buy souvenirs. Um, so I remember, yeah. So when I was 15, it, it was around 15, um, that, that I remember how much fun it was mm -hmm. to do that trip. Like before that, um, I, didn't really have a lot of travel experience. So that's why I didn't discover it sooner. But yeah. Wow. Sounds like, you know, you knew early on that that's what you wanted to do. And then when you had the opportunity later on, like you said, as a student, yes. you kind of plan for that. Yes. Like maybe when other people were doing other things, you were yeah. planning for that. Exactly. And so you talked to, go ahead. Now I was going to say, um, like I moved to the Netherlands when I was 19 and my sister Lily was 18. So we moved together and to to study and we moved in august and i remember we were already excited to um plan our first trip so we moved in august and we planned a trip to paris to spend um the end of the year or the christmas season in paris that year mm -hmm. and that's what we did okay. the following year i think around may we went to spain and that's how it kept going and then um and then yeah so Okay. It's like that's also we couldn't stop. It's like potato chips, right? You yes. can't stop at one. I got you. So obviously we talked a little bit about Curacao and how it belongs to the Dutch. So you're obviously you're a Dutch citizen, yes. which means you have a European passport, right? Yes. And so you talked about Paris, talked about Spain, yeah, talked about Italy. So how many places exactly have you been able to visit so far? Uh um Where have I your think... travels taken you? Um, I think at least 25 countries. You heard that? Like that? At least 25. <laughs> something, <maybe> like that. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Something like that. Well, obviously, like in Europe, I've been to like England, Portugal, um, um, Romania, um, Turkey. Um, I haven't been to Greece. Not I yet. really want to go to Greece. Um, but we're working on it. Yeah. Luxembourg, Belgium, Germany. Um, yeah. And then, of course, South America. I've been to Suriname, Brazil, Argentina. My Argentina trip was interesting. Like, talking about traveling, like, when I was in Brazil for five months, I had my student visa, so it expired after five months. So I needed to, like, leave the country and then come back. So I was like, okay, so where am I going to go? Um, so I just looked up, you know, on the map, and I'm like, I can go to Argentina for a week. And then come back, and then I can stay three three more months um, as a as a tourist. And this is what I'm talking about. Like as a student, I had that freedom, so I was able to kind of like extend um, extend my stay, and it wasn't like an issue okay. because um, I was able to manage that with a university. Because after after my trip in Brazil, I had to start. Um, I mean, continue again with classes, but I was able to manage that. So. I went to Buenos Aires, the capital, and I stayed there for a week. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And I went by myself. Wow. And I remember one of those, one of my happy moments in, in Argentina was like walking in the street and then seeing like these musicians playing music, guitar, and it was really beautiful. And in that moment, I just thought, you know what? I just want to be in a moment. I sat on the on the floor on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, there were no cars. It's like in a in a city mm -hmm. where people just walk. And I just sat sat down and I just watched them and I listened to the music. Wow. And I was just, it was so peaceful and it it was a moment full of freedom because wow. in that moment I had nothing wow. like wow. nothing like oh you need to do this you need to do that you know oh I'm on a schedule so I enjoy that moment so much I wow. just sat there on the floor for I think two three hours mm. and then this lady that makes like bracelets uh, started talking to me and then we had a conversation and I just enjoyed the music so much and I remember that that was that was such a nice moment, like being present in the moment, which is something I feel that um, nowadays people don't do often enough. It's like we're all on a schedule, like the whole time, the mm -hmm. whole time. Mm -hmm. That's why I think like going on vacation shouldn't be like a luxury. It be should. A it is a necessity. Okay. It's not like that in like everywhere. Um, but like in Europe, for example, or from my experience, like in the Netherlands, in Curacao, like people are more intentional about that. And they do have more vacation days. You know what I mean? Wow. So I went. And it helps that they do have more vacation days. Yes. Like when I used to work in Curacao, I used to have 25 days. I'm not saying everybody has 25 days. It depends on what you do. But that was normal for my position gotcha. back then. Gotcha. That That is five weeks. So you, you can... You can, you can do a lot. Do a lot. Yeah, you can do a lot. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. I really like that story you shared about sitting <clears throat> on the ground in Buenos Aires. And it just, like, as you were saying that, it just made me feel like there was a sense of freedom. Yes. And things like that. And it doesn't seem like that's something you can get in every situation, in every setting. But it afforded you that opportunity to, to, to have that. Yeah. Does that speak to, like, something more than just <clears throat> traveling? Like, is that, like, a core value of yours as far as, like, that freedom aspect of it? Yeah. Before I answer that question, did I tell you that story before about Argentina? I believe you had mentioned that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, just wondering. Yes, definitely. Freedom is one of my one of my core values, and obviously, like your one of your core values is freedom too. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we interpret it in different ways, right? Like right. for me, freedom means that I need to have time to do things that are optional. I don't want to have like everything like scheduled. Like a to-do list. Yes. You know what I mean? Okay. Like for you, for example, even like you're working for yourself and that's your definition of freedom, right? So you may be super busy, but because you're working for yourself, you're you yeah. still feel free. Exactly. Like I feel like I need some some extra time so I can do optional things because for me, that's when my creativity sparks. Mm. If I'm going from back to back to back to back. Um, appointments, appointments, appointments. Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't get that space in my head where I can be creative, and that's very important to me. So, yes. So that's why when I'm traveling, I feel like my brain goes like... <laughs> it's like that creativity comes like... I love it. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Well, that's good. So where do you have on your list of places that you would like to visit next? <sighs> Man, I wish I could go to so many places, but if I could could choose like one place right now, I would want to go to Curacao. Oh, back home. Yes, because I miss my family. I miss my family. <laughs> <laughs> and I just miss, I just, because I haven't been back for a while and I just, and also with, with COVID and everything, like, I just feel like um, it, 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 it feels like it has been too long. That's how it feels for me. And I just want to spend time, you know, with my family. I want to swim. I've been missing that a lot. Yes. Waters. Yes. Nice. I just, that, that that's like one of the things that I enjoy, like when I'm swimming underwater and it feels like so peaceful and just like feeling the sun. So it just feels healthy. So yeah. So if I could choose right now, I would want to go to Curacao 
um, to connect and just relax. But then, of course, I have I have a lot of other places on my list that I would like to go to. One place that I've been wanting to go to for a while is Thailand. Um, I would like to explore um, the nature parts in Thailand. I want to ride on an elephant mm. and I want to get a 24 hour massage. Is that right? Is that even <laughs> no. such a thing? I was going to say, I've never heard of that. <laughs> no, no. The massages are very <laughs> affordable. So, um, so yeah. Okay. Um, and just, I, I would like to go back to South America. I, there are so many, many things so to do. An endless of places yeah. that you can still visit. So even though you've been to so many countries, yes, I'm sure there's still many more options out there for you to explore. Yes, so. and even when I finish visiting all the countries, I'll start all over again because then I want to go back and try things again. You know, like. Okay. Got it, got it. Right. Like, like, for example, I would like to go back to Colombia. I had a really good time there. Like, I love Medellin. Medellin is a beautiful, beautiful city. It has, like, the city part and also nature. I love that. I want to go back to Brazil. I mean, I haven't been back since. And um, I want to go back to see my friends to just, like, experience the things that I, you know, that I did back then. And just, yeah. So. Wow, wow. Sounds like you are a true citizen of the world. Mm -hmm. that's and I want to go back to Europe, too. So uh, <laughs> don't get me started. Ah, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so transitioning a bit, though, uh, to just like your professional life. So you are a certified relationship coach. Mm -hmm. Take me through your journey to becoming a coach. Yes. Um, so I think when I look at my whole life, I feel like I've always been interested in how to improve like even as a kid i remember like learning new things and if it made sense to me i would try to implement it okay. you know what i mean um and so for example i remember at church um they would have marriage seminars which mm -hmm. is actually for married people mm -hmm. but my sister and i um we we just love to learn. So I would just find a way to still go to these seminars and just sit there and with my notebook and I would make notes mm -hmm. because I was just like very curious and interested in the dynamic, like the human dynamic, like relationship dynamic. I didn't think that I wanted to necessarily get married, get married at that time, but I just wanted to learn. So I love to learn. And that's like one of the things that always was very interested, mm -hmm. interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I grew up um, seeing my dad um, giving workshops about personality types. Mm -hmm. And I always thought it was very interesting. Like he has a very funny way of delivering his workshops because he's just like, I don't know. He has a way of making it very funny. So um, he made it fun for me to experience. And I would always want to see how people react in the audience when they learn something about what he was teaching. Right. So as much as I enjoyed learning myself, I enjoyed seeing others learn. You love to see their reaction. Yes, how they okay. learn, like how wh what do they do with the information they receive? What do they do when they learn something about their personality type? When they realize, oh, it's normal, it's not, I, there's nothing wrong with me. But then still, because I have that self-awareness now, like what am I going to do with it? Okay. So I've always been very observant of, of that. Okay. So and then after that, so um, I ended up doing a master's in culture organization and management okay. with a concentration in change management, okay. specifically the people side of change. So mm. whenever organizations go to, through a reorganization um, or, or even just in general, because it's not only when you're facing something challenging, it's also like in general, like preventative, you know, mm -hmm. like, so, but especially when there is a merge, um, how do you how do you handle that piece? You know okay. that piece of the organization. Okay. Um, a lot of times that is being th that is being underestimated, but mm -hmm. it is a very crucial part for the long term success of your um, of your integration. So that's basically what I study, which has to do with the people side of organization. Again, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so. I continued to to learn and grow. At some point, I did a um, I did my certification in relationship coaching, and I just 
I just keep keep learning. Even like right now, I'm doing a course. Okay. So um, I think my journey started even before I knew. And mm. it's just like all my experiences and my passion and my love for this work mm -hmm. um, kept accumulating. Wow. So okay. I think it's a journey that will never end. It's just I'm always excited to learn new things, even okay. like... I started this new course and I already feel like I learned something that I just implemented in a course, in a coaching session um, last week. So I just, for me, it's very exciting. So it doesn't sound like you're slowing down anytime soon. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. What do you enjoy most about being a coach? Oh, I really enjoy seeing people grow. So I enjoy seeing them reaching their goals. I enjoy seeing them becoming more self-aware, becoming aware of the choices that they make. Because a lot of times people, I think, I think a lot of times people do have good intention, you know? Like I think there is a lot of good intention in people's hearts. So they try to do what they think is best. But what if you don't know all the options that you have, right? So you pick between one and two, but actually there are 10 options, but you didn't mm. know. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So let's say you're you're um, um, you're about to date someone, and you think that this is the best option that you have in your mind. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you didn't check your values. You didn't think about compatibility. You don't know your personality type. You don't know his personality type. You mm -hmm. have no idea about any of those things. You know what I mean? Wow. So you're just jumping in a really in a relationship, thinking like, "Oh, this is great," but it could have been so much, so much better. And then down the road, you're going to face challenges that you could have prevented. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, what you don't know can hurt you. Yes, exactly. So that's the self-awareness piece that is very important. So I do a lot of work with self-awareness, um, self-awareness piece, because that's like building the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, once you know, once you have that awareness, th that awareness is, is increasing, then you can pretend like you don't know anymore. Like, oh, I didn't know. I had no idea. You know, they fooled me. You know, they lied to me. No, you're going to learn how to detect these things. Okay. And then you're going to make intentional choices. That that It's about making wise choices. And again, it's not about not making mistakes because we all make mistakes. It's not about that. It's about knowing what, what you're getting yourself into. It's like, for example, you're going to buy a car. You buy a car without checking the mileage, without without taking a look at the engine, without knowing the year, nothing. So you buy a car and with zero knowledge, just because <laughs> the car looks pretty. Right, right. Versus you check how okay, how how much is the how many miles that did this car have? Um, mm -hmm. is the engine yeah, you, good? You do your report on it. You get a Carfax and all of that. Yeah, that's what it's called. Car Carfax. Car okay, yeah. Carfax. So you do that right for something as simple as a car. But when it comes to relationships, people tend to jump without any facts. No car facts, no person facts, nothing, just because they follow their emotions and they get blinded. So basically, self-awareness is like getting that car facts. And so you know what you're getting yourself into. So if you say, oh, this car has 300,000 300, miles. It's a lot of miles. If you decide to still buy the car, at least that was an intentional choice. That's true. You didn't think it had... 100 miles. That's true. You see what I mean? That's true. So it's like giving people the the, the true choice mm. versus them thinking that, oh, this car is great. No, did you check this? So that is like a lot of the self-awareness piece that I work with, work um, on. And then it's nice to be able to see people realizing like, oh, you know, I'm considering buying a car and it has this and this miles and the engine has this. So they start talking in a language that makes sense okay. because now they know and whatever choice they make is because they truly wanted to make that choice, right. whether it's the best choice or not, that's up to them. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I help them create clarity. And also what I enjoy is when other people start to see the changes in them. Like when family members start to see the changes in them, mm -hmm. when they can go ahead and help other people because then everything they learn, they can go ahead and help others too. Exactly. See what I mean? Exactly. So it's like that trickle down effect that I no, also that's like. Awesome. I like. I like that too. Like 
when I hear my clients say like, hey, you know, others have told me that they've started to know this, this and me. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. That's a sign of ultimate growth. Right exactly. Here. And when when others start to see it and, and that means that the client is owning the journey mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. because as a coach, I'm not here to tell you, oh, this is what you have to do. No, it's like we're we're going through this journey together and I'm mm -hmm. going to support you and help you find out things about yourself that you didn't know you had and just create clarity as we go. And then you're going to make choices that are beneficial for you. So, um, yeah. Wow. Well, that's awesome. Uh, create clarity, uh, help people become more aware and different things like that. So they can ultimately make better decisions. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wow. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, how would you define coaching for somebody who may be like, that sounds good. Uh, I'm just not sure if it's for me. Okay, so the way I would define it is that I would support you going from point A to point B, right? So let's say you say, oh, I'm such an insecure person, right? So that's your your point A, which is your current state. And you say, you know what? I really want to become a confident person. That's your point B. Okay. That is your future ideal state. Mm. Mm. Okay? So as you can see, there is a gap there. Most definitely. Right? So as a coach... I help you bridge that gap Okay. by coming up. We come up with, with um, goals every time with goals that are realistic goals that you think you can do. And every time we, we, we um, focus on a piece of that goal and that's how we, we form the bridge together until you get to the goal that you wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would define it. And of course it's a collaboration. Like, one thing that is very important is for the clients to also be excited to do the work because I noticed that clients that are excited to do the work, they see, they can see progress very fast mm. because coaching is very goal oriented. So you, you know, like we talk about this a lot, like it's, you can see progress pretty fast right. when you do the work. Exactly. If you don't do the work, then it becomes a little bit more challenging for both of us. But um, yes, it's like, because okay. there are a lot of assessments that I do also little tools here and there that you feel like, okay, you get some tangible things that you can, you can um, work on. So it's okay. not vague. Got it. So you kind of spoke on that a little bit. The client has to be willing to do the work. So yes. who's your ideal client? Hi, my ideal client is somebody who loves to learn. That's mm -hmm. definitely my ideal client. I have this client. I, 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 like I, <laughs> I tell him, for example, to start start reading a book because we're going to discuss it like he listens to the whole book in one day. Wow. So it's like I have to to make sure I have enough things for him because he's like super fast. Like, it's so funny. But I have such a good time. Like, yeah. So he, he's like such a great learner. Um, So I really enjoy that. So for me, the, those sessions are like it's fun it's like um another thing like for me like coaching coaching has to be it has to be fun like um i see it as as a journey that we go you know we go on together and um we can make we can make anything out of it you know okay. as long as there is the learning piece there mm -hmm. like the learning piece should be there always but it, it can be a very enjoyable um experience so yeah so somebody who is eager to learn, okay. somebody who is willing to do the work, like, okay. like who has that positive attitude, mm -hmm. um, definitely. And um, I don't know, somebody who's ex excited to, to just be part of somebody who's excited about the things that he or she can achieve, you know? Okay. And yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds like somebody who kind of maybe shares your values. <laughs> <laughs> a learner, an explorer, <laughs> high readiness. Uh, you know, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. It doesn't have to be somebody who who knows a lot or anything. Like, like if you have if you feel like, you know what, I don't have any awareness. So you don't have to know anything in order to start with. Um, you may feel like you know nothing. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Right. I don't need any knowledge from you i just wow. need the right attitude okay have the right attitude yeah and just be willing yes wow. okay yes That's you awesome. don't need to be prepared for anything come as you are 
Wow. And Vanya <laughs> will help guide you to wherever it is that you guys need to go. Yeah, come as you are. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just, just come as you are with a willing heart, and then we'll work it out. Wow. I like that. I like that. And so, obviously, you have a ton of different things that you uh, are good at as well, um, besides coaching. So, if you weren't <laughs> a coach, what else would you be doing? What else could you be doing? Oh, I, you know, like. You're multi-talented. So <laughs> they need to know that. I really love creative cooking. So, I love trying out new things. And I don't really do recipes. Even if I want to, I can't because I'm not structured like that i'm just like going with the flow <laughs> you know doing whatever i feel um i love to sing um so that's definitely something that i enjoy i hope to be able to do that more and more yeah, and that allows you to do that creativity thing yeah so not either or it's like i can do that also you know i just want to do that i mean i've had a pretty hectic time like these this year i mean so many changes, you know, I think a lot of people have been adjusting. So, um, but yeah, definitely, it's definitely something that I want to do okay. more. Um, so creative and, cooking, singing, uh -huh. uh, sounds like you yeah. got a lot going on. Yeah. And I want to do more, more traveling. I mean, obviously the coaching, you said like, if I wouldn't be do, if I wouldn't be doing coaching, um, I don't know. I just want to do them all together. So don't ask me either or. Okay, so it doesn't have to be either or. You can still combine all of them and still enjoy, you know, maximize life. You know. Okay, yes. awesome, awesome. So um, what are some of your hidden talents? Some of the things that you're good at that maybe people don't know about? <laughs> I like to whistle. Okay. Now, for <laughs> people who aren't familiar, her whistling game is on point. Do you have <laughs> anything that you can do for them right now? Because I don't think they might believe this, even if they watch this episode. They, have, they may have to hear this one. I, um, I'll just do something simple. Mm. Did y'all hear that? Do you hear those pipes? It's unbelievable. How long did it take you to learn something like that? It sounds simple enough, but I couldn't do that to save my life. <laughs> what if I tell you, whistle, otherwise they will kidnap you. I can't. Try, try. You want me to embarrass myself? It's okay, it's nah. okay. Try one, one, one. <laughs> nah, not a chance, not a chance. We're going to have to probably edit that one out. <laughs> <laughs> so you asked me how I learned it or how Yeah, how long it take you to get so good at that? Actually, my mom told me that I started whistling when I was a kid that I was trying to blow my soup. Oh, is that what it was? Yes. That's how you got started? Yeah. And then from there Star was born. <laughs> well, actually my dad whistles too. Oh, so it's a family affair. Yeah, so he whistles and yeah, so yeah, other than that, I just do it. I mean, there's still a lot of opportunity in the whistling game. Yeah, we'll see what we can uh, yeah. find out. Maybe that will be my next next uh, career. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Venture <laughs> off into some sort of whistling guru. Or Professional whistler. There you go. There yes. you go. All right. Yes. Awesome, awesome. And so where can somebody find you online? Well, obviously on Beard and Curls, like YouTube, Instagram, um, and Facebook. Um, but you can also find me on Vintage Vanya. So Vintage Vanya on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Yeah. So you're on a couple of different platforms. Yes. Awesome. Well, Vanya, it's been real. How's it been for you sitting on your own show? <laughs> it was funny to, for you to interview me. <laughs> but I, I feel like I feel like it was nice. Uh, did you learn something new? I sure did. Yeah? I learned quite a bit. That's nice. You see, so, it's that's why it's nice to ask ask questions, ask each other questions. True. Because even even when you live together, I mean, maybe you get used to being together. So it's nice to go back and ask exactly, certain questions. Exactly. So I'm glad you learned something. Uh, thank you, Vanya. Uh, you're welcome. 
Where are you have it, folks? That's our show for today. Thanks again for tuning in. And as always, like it or not, Beard and, and Curls is the new his and hers. hers.